broadcast is live. So let me check this. Ooh. We got links. You guys get links? Where? Oh, are you asking me for a link? Uh, yeah, I was asking for a link. Gotcha. Yeah, let me. I'm checking it. Checking it out. We get all my burps out now. Hmm. Not sure how to grab this link. In bed. Oh, here we go. I'm going to Skype it to you. See what that gives us. Yeah, I got it. I'm, uh, I'm hijacking it to you. I think. Gotcha. Yeah, well, checking it out. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Do you hear Phil finger drumming? We got all my butts out. <laughs> that's awesome. How's the lighting? Do we need more lighting? Um, I probably need less lighting, actually. Hold on one sec. Are we ready? Are we testing things? No, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. We're uh, so yeah, if you could just, what, what, what? I guess you stop it broadcasting, and then we see a link, and then. Did you get the link? I saw the one on YouTube uh, on Twitter. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Ah, it's me. So. What is this? I'm confused. So this 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 link was the test link. Yeah, that's the delayed broadcast. It's delayed by like ten seconds or something like that. And that's live right now. So somebody can click on it. And join. Okay. That's confusing. So hopefully we can just trim the video because I'm randomly blathering at the start. So. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so I've retweeted that link. Great. And yeah, okay. Once Come we're on. done, once we're done, just give me the video and yeah. delete, delete that, and then I'll. Upload <laughs> it. <laughs> um, All right. Oh, technology. Uh, good to go. I'm good. All right. Uh, what do we want to start talking about first? Joomla stuff. Sure. Do we have the uh, topics? Yeah, well, we're going to talk about um, what Don's been doing with Joomla because uh, he's been given some pretty cool powers to do some PSR zero y stuff. Um, uh, PSR 4 and the fig in general, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, I was also going to... Shit, I really did not prepare very well today. I was going to look at... Um, <laughs> I usually do. <laughs> I just turned up. I was like, well, whatever. I was going to talk about like cool things that are happening on uh, in in PHP, which is what we're meant to be talking about. But there's not a lot. This week's been kind of dead on Reddit, apart from people complaining about the PHP.net website getting hacked. Yeah. Was there any new PHP drama? I don't think so. Uh, no, not really. Wow. PSR falls all over the damn place. We're talking about that already. Um. There's a new expectations. Uh, sorry, there's new exceptions RFC, which looks pretty cool. Uh, so we can talk about that at the end. Cool. Uh, but yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. <clears throat> la 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 la. The human torch was denied a bank loan. The human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> scotch, 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 scotch. 
<laughs> um, right. So we're going to start with introductions, and then this is where we'll like start the video when you trim it. Yeah. So, uh, nah, hang on. <laughs> Episode 15. <laughs> Episode 15, fuck you. Uh, right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode uh, 15 of PHP Town Hall, and this time we're trying it on video. Um, I'm sorry that you can see our faces. That's not necessarily something you want or need, but uh, we're going to give it a try. And, uh, and this week, or this episode, me and Ben are joined by Don. Uh, if you'd like to introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you do. Uh, hi, my name is Don Gilbert. I am on the Joomla Framework Maintainers team. Um, I work for a web design company in Chicago where we mainly deal with um, Joomla websites for Fortune 500 companies. And um, with all the work I was doing there, I felt it was time to start contributing back to the community. So about the past year and a half, I've been real active in the Joomla community and um, just helping that move forward into uh, modern PHP practices and things like that. So. Uh, sweet. Um, so, what what sort of uh, contributions are you making to Joomla? What are you? What are the things you're working on? And what what have you been doing recently as well? Okay, so I should probably start with a little history of Joomla because everybody knows Joomla as the CMS. It's one of the big three up there with WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. Um, but a lot of a, a lot of developers kind of um, look down their noses at it a bit. I know Zach Kids Miller when he learned I was working with Joomla. Um, kind of said, what? Why are you doing that? Why? <laughs> uh, I really felt that was the broader broader PHP community's take on what Joomla is. Because it was started uh, as a fork of Mambo back in 2005. You know, it's got yeah. really old roots. It's, it's um, you know, it followed the singleton pattern. It, uh, it's got statics everywhere. We had a global factory, things like that, which made it convenient and easy to build apps, but it was really hard to test your apps. And with the past couple of years, with the explosion of testing on the PHP community, we saw that testing isn't something we can do with the current state of Joomla that it's in. So that, combined with uh, PSR0 and Composer, you know, becoming and just exploding on the scenes and really making it easy to reuse code, I wanted to be able to use that at work. and. Um, help the broader Joomla community to use these great tools that are available to them, but we were kind of stuck in the past. Um, so back in 2011, there was a big push with Joomla to um, kind of take out of the Joomla CMS the reusable bits. Um, if you're familiar with, and I'm sure everybody listening to this is, the breakup of Code Igniter and uh, Expression Engine. Expression Engine started out as a CMS, and then they extracted the reusable bits out and made Code Igniter 1.0, and then rebuilt Expression Engine on top of that framework. That's exactly what happened with Joomla about uh, two years ago. Um, we're still in the process of rebuilding the CMS onto this framework, but um, it's getting there. One of the biggest changes, though, um, that still has yet to make it into the CMS is PSR0 namespacing. Um, you know, namespaces have been supported in PHP since 2008, and it, here it is 2013, and June was just catching up to that because that's I, yep. I really drove that forward because I wanted to use that within work, and um, you know, Composer requires it, things like that. Yeah, I remember talking to you um, a while ago when you were kind of I think just getting first involved with this, just saying. Uh, that you really wanted to get PSR zero in there, and and that you really wanted to start making it use some of the standards, and I think eventually the core team were just like, yeah, fuck it, go do it, right? Like they they kind of just let you in, and just, now you seem to be pretty much in control of of that of making that transition. Uh, yeah. Is that about right? Yeah. So um, there was a core team of about six developers that all worked for eBay, and they're the ones who really pushed the uh, advancement in the Joomla framework before I came along. You know, from 2011 to through 2012, they really uh, pushed that forward, um, but they didn't get as far as introducing namespacing and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, since I wanted to use that, I just 
I was getting a little pushback from it. Some people weren't in, interested in it, so I just said, fuck it, I'm going to do it and create the RFC and the PR and, and put it out there and see what happens. Well, shortly after that, um, about four of the developers that were working on it left and started working for another company, left eBay. And then there was only a couple guys left, and they needed some more help with it. And um, Andrew Eddy, the founder of Joomla, is actually still one of those guys. And him and I had some long conversations to help him understand or to where he could finally get, like, wow, reusable packages in small pieces, small components um, is the future. It's where PHP is heading. Monolithic frameworks isn't the answer anymore. People want to be able to pick and choose. So hmm. the namespacing effort, the packaging effort, things like that that I was leading really was what he saw Joomla wanted to become. So in January of this year, they invited me on to the core framework team to really help make the decisions and drive that change. And since then, we've had um, an alpha release and three beta releases where we're just trying to get everything up to snuff, get our test coverage up. We're at about 65% test coverage for a, a Joomla framework, which is 65 nice. lines of code. So it's actually pretty good. Um, <laughs> that's, that's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're doing things like dependency injection. Um, like I said, was telling Ben before this started, just two weeks ago I finally made the last commit to completely remove the global factory that, that was everywhere. You you could be in a model three levels deep and just somebody calls J factory get application and then you're like, what the hell? Why is this dependency right here? What do you need? <laughs> So um, Un unlimited nesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to stop that, you know, dependency injection, testability. It's all the same, you know. It's it, one depends upon the other. So yeah. that's the way we've been going. And, and like I said, I just made the last commit to remove the last instance of that two weeks ago. We tagged our beta three release, and then um, here in two weeks we have the Juma World Conference, November. Uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th, and we're planning on releasing um, 1.0 stable then. So oh, it's nice. it's about a year's worth of effort for me um, to get us to a stable release there. Oh, that's wow. good, because uh, PHP doesn't have that many frameworks, so it's good that you're helping. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, actually, on that note, though, was there any debate on just moving the CMS on top of an existing framework? And if so, why did you decide to do a new framework? So... Um, with the way Joomla handled things, um, you know, the global factory object and, and things like that, that's what the Joomla developers are used to. So there's over 7,000, well, as of a year and a half ago, there was about 10,000 extensions on the Joomla extensions directory. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those included Joomla 1.5 compatible code. Um, which have since been deprecated, but now we've regained. We're at about 7,000 extensions for the Joomla CMS right now, and every one of those developers are used to the way we've been doing things. And to rewrite the CMS on top of something completely foreign, like Symphony 2 or Yi or think, something like that, would be um, kind of the suicide for the, the Joomla project, because one of the things that makes us one of the big three is the um, extension developers and the developer community. It's uh, a big yeah. part. I mean, that's, it's interesting that that was the decision you made because faced with essentially the exact same choice, uh, the Drupal guys went with, fuck it, start again. Uh, well, they, they wanted to... do that every single version. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Fuck it, let's start again, let's make hooks and core and let's do all this. <laughs> yeah, I think for the last three major versions, they've just kind of just like ripped it out and started again, which is great. I mean, this is... It's, it's just every single project always has the, the really hard choice of um, maintain backwards compatibility forever, main it, you know, keep it for one major version at a time, or try and keep it for a couple of major versions and have deprecation and legacy packages. It's the change management that's the hard part. And luckily, Pyro CMS has had the, the option of just saying, like, all right, we were built on top of Coding Lighter. No one uses that, and it's terrible, so let's switch to something else, and we can just... We, we, we're not completely restarting again, but we're kind of staggering it out a little bit, so it is essentially changing between two and three. It's a big, big change, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense for you guys to try and keep that working. Um, it, is backwards compatibility, like, a main driver? Do you, do you often hold back on features for, for uh, backwards compatibility's sake, or...? 
So within the CMS, there's so now there's two separate projects in Joomla. There's a Joomla framework, ESR0, namespacing, um, late static binding, you know, everything that you would want there, dependency injection. And then there's the Joomla CMS that's still kind of the old style. We're in the transition right now where we're working on figuring out how can we now rebuild a CMS on top of this and still retain our user base and our developer trust that we've gained over the years. Gross. Yeah, well, you know, it's the mics. <laughs> That's the trouble of being on video as well. You can't edit, edit that stuff out. Yeah. So, uh, people are just watching me slowly switch onto different beers and, and get, through the, uh, get through the video. I'm now on some uh, post-room post-road pumpkin ale, so. Pumpkin ale, nice, good. Yeah. Pro product placement. Try a refreshing <laughs> bottle of post-road pumpkin ale. Or Mike's hard lemonade. <laughs> now, hey. my beer is a little more interesting. This is a, a local, local brewer here. His Hipster. name is Ben Edmonds. Ah, nice, nice. Oh. It's not, I did not make it. No, there's actually another Ben Edmonds here that's a brewer. Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought you were being funny. Um, Ooh, that's, that's that's ironic. I had to buy it. <laughs> Couldn't resist. It's so I had a thought there, and it was going to change your life, and I forgot it. That's because I started bothering about you burping and drinking. Um, yes. Um, so where were we? We were talking about uh, the framework, the Joomla project, Joomla CMS, rebuilding CMS on top of. Yeah, you're talking about, um, I guess, so right now you're, both projects aren't being recoded at the exact same time, right? You're kind of going through and making the framework so that over the next couple of major versions... Oh, backwards compatibility. Backwards yeah. compatibility. So with backwards compatibility, with the framework, we're like, number one driver for the framework is best practices. Um, that is what we consider most when we're developing, when we're writing tests, everything. And then secondarily, it's do we have to break backwards compatibility with the CMS with this, or can we do it in a way that it's you know still compatible? Out of the box, it's all not compatible for the reason of namespaces. Um, instead of extending you know your your J controller base, everything that extends that now has to change to extend Joomla controller, abstract base controller, or whatever. So that there, it's not backwards compatible, but in, in other senses, method signatures, things like that, we're trying to retain backwards compatibility. And uh, one of the cool things is, actually, when we first started this, is I uh, devised a way um, using uh, some fancy auto winner trick. I'm sure Anthony Ferrara wouldn't be happy to see what exactly we were doing. But uh, where we were, I built uh, an array to alias class names, their old style class names, to the new namespace class names, and then yeah. dynamically extending those classes <laughs> within the yeah. order. Eval? Uh, not, maybe? No. <laughs> I was doing class alias. Okay. Uh, it's, it's almost as bad, but it's... Yeah, almost. <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, the cool part about that was is we have this awesome tracker app um, that we've been working on for about a year as well. And it integrates with any GitHub project. It'll pull in uh, the issues and things like that. And then it gives you a little bit more control over what you have just within GitHub um, for issue management. And it's really important for the Joomla CMS because we have teams, a uh, bug squad team, you know, that they're assigned to different things. They need to be able to assign priority to different parts. So it's pretty vital for us. Right now we're using GForge. I don't know if you've ever used that. Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a pain. Um, so we're rewriting it and uh, dog fooding our code and uh, writing nice. it. Nice. Yeah. So it's a good way of doing it. Plus, if it's internal, then you really have more control over things. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So that was written out almost entirely um, on the Joomla CMS code. And then um, we, I did the namespacing effort, and I got this um, method in place to allow backwards compatibility between class names and their new namespace parts. And I was actually able to just drop that in and put this app on top of the namespace uh, framework, and it worked flawlessly. So oh, wow. that is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Boom. Mind blown. <laughs> that's, uh, that's impressive stuff, man. So uh, I guess some of the stuff you've been working on for getting this work, um, 
for the Joomla framework, getting it ready and getting it standards compliant, is implementing all the PSRs. So you've done you've uh, the PSR not, zero. Not all the PSRs. I wanted to a do whole, PSR two. A whole that bunch of them, right? But it's that's yeah. what I was going to ask. It was you've definitely done PSR uh, zero and probably one. You'd probably skip two. Um, there's yeah. definitely some PSR three elements in there. And you were saying that you've already got some PSR four stuff supported, even though we haven't stopped arguing about it yet. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, so, um, <laughs> We did follow, in the original RFC for namespaces, I said we need to follow PSR0 because Composer is a thing. It's not going away. Yeah. You need yeah. to support this. Um, and then PSR1, um, you know, it's the non-controversial code style guide. So we yeah. felt we were already following that. Um, Joomla had a coding standard before PSR2, so we stuck with that more or less. Um, okay. It's very very similar, actually, to Laravel's uh, coding standard. Nice, yeah. Well, that, Laravel is is kind of they, they call it PSR two ish, um, yeah, and yeah. It's, <laughs> it's exactly the same apart from he prefers uh, Taylor prefers to put his brackets down the line so it's Allman style and yeah. they use tabs instead of spaces. But apart from that, it's yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. Exactly. We should, we should we talk do. about tabs versus spaces more though because it is our favorite topic. <laughs> I think we should do tabs <laughs> for indenting, spaces for alignment. Yeah. But, but here, <laughs> really. Did you see I, that thing I linked up? I um, somebody somebody posted a really good uh, meme, and it was like a scene from Jurassic Park, and it was uh, it was someone was shouting like, "Hey, that guy uses tabs uh, spaces instead of tabs." <laughs> see, see, nobody cares. See, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah that. So um, yeah, we do PSR. Sorry, I, I feel like I cut Ben off. Ben, were you about to say something then? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Sorry, dude. Carry on, Don. <laughs> okay, so we do PSR zero, PSR one. Um, then um, our application uses um, the logger interface for PSR three. Um, we use monolog and within the application, but you can use any PSR three compatible logger. Um, and then um, Andrew Eddy, he was the previous um, representative for, to the PHP fig for the Joomla framework, and before he left. He was working, I think, with Larry Garfield from Drupal, um, just on the cache um, PSR. And we actually implemented what, at the time, a year ago, <laughs> was um, you know, the best, the one that seemed like it was going to pass. Yes. So we got cache interface, cache item interface. And uh, the question now, obviously, because that's not what's going to be the final PSR 4 is what do we do for our cache package because we implemented this. Um, I think we're going to end up actually just naming it, folding it into our own code, and then when PSR 4 does pass, that if. Will, uh, if, yes, if it passes. <laughs> Guillermo uh, and uh, Robert can hash it out. Yeah, right. So uh, I think the, the most... Im- if anyone doesn't know what PSR 4 is, then it's kind of a replacement um, autoloader or an alternative autoloader for now, and then maybe it will one day replace. I was describing PSR cache, wasn't I? Yes. You you were talking about both. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. You said PSR 4, and you were talking about PSR cache. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. No, okay, so back to PSR 4. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's talk about that now. I think um, you should start doing years. So it should be like PSR 2013. Yeah, nice. Well, then we year each. Yeah. That's all they do now. Uh, no, actually, oh, actually, we cash in two years. <laughs> we we do we do um, yeah. I don't know. We've it's been a very long time since we got out any out. We've actually got um, as many PSRs that are close to being finished as we as we have ever released. Um, we just have to fucking finish them. And I really can't say too much on that topic because I pulled the PSR for about three hours yep. before it was going to pass. <laughs> uh, I just got off a plane, jet lagged, and I'm like, I was sat down in the UK and had my first proper cider in the longest time. Went, you know what? Fuck this. Pulled it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so PSR four is the class autoloader. PSR five is the um, PHP dot block syntax, uh, mm-hmm. and um, uh, PSR six <laughs> is caching, which is what you were talking about. Yes. Um, so actually, that's a really good point. Like. If you implemented what was at the time the correct thing, then it's probably not the correct thing anymore. No. Uh, no. <laughs> so with uh, PSR four, it's the auto loading PSR. Um, one of the things that um, the Joomla this, this used to be PSR X, or what happened to PSR? Yeah. So PSR X was never the official name. It was just uh, referred to as uh, like it was before we had the workflow. Um, PSR people would say like. 
and then when PSRX is released, and what they meant by that was, and then PSR whatever this happens. Uh, the, the number used to be assigned once it was accepted, but now it's assigned um, when it reaches draft stage. So re to really quickly recap, you, uh, the new workflow is um, pre-draft is just someone's got some random idea, it's a random mark file on a GitHub profile somewhere, uh, then they have to bring it to the fig uh, for an entrance vote. If it passes the entrance vote, then uh, to, to pass the entrance vote, it has to have two sponsors from the fig. Uh, so that kind of gives it some sort of formality. Uh, and then they have an entrance vote to say, yes, we like the idea of this. Um, then it goes into a draft stage. Then you work on the document, make it better. Then it goes to review um, whenever the editor decides. And then you have another vote uh, when it goes to review to make it an accepted final thing. So as soon as it hits draft, it gets that number, which is why we have PSR 4, 5, and 6, even though they're not actually accepted standards yet. Um, okay, so, sorry. Keep so going on, on. on PSR 6. So PSR 4, 4, the auto-loading standard, it allows you to have a shallow directory structure by saying this is a prefix, and when I load a class, I want to strip off the prefix and then load that from the file system that way after doing some transformations. So with PSR0, you had a straight one-to-one -one mapping between the class name and the file system. Now you're able to have a truncated class name. Yeah. And um, Joomla actually implemented this back in 2011 when they originally pulled the, the framework out of the CMS, and, uh, but it wasn't namespace. It didn't support namespaces. It was just class prefixes. Um, so everything in Joomla is prefixed with a J, so you would have like J HTTP response or J controller <laughs> base. Yep, yep. And uh, of course we we did camel casing, and then we would split the directory structure based on the camel case. So nice. if it was J HTTP response, you would strip off the J, look in our library's Joomla folder, and then go HTTP response.php. And that was actually one of the arguments not to go with namespacing for the Joomla CMS, is they're like, well, we get we lose this uh, functionality we have of our current autoloader. So I was like, it doesn't matter, all right? You're going you're gonna to love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Why, <laughs> why should we use namespaces when we could just keep on doing this really bad thing that we've been doing for a while? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a little. There was a lot of pushback. But, yeah. you know, not so much anymore. Um, we're really we're pushing it forward. What does the core team look like now? Because you mentioned that eBay pretty much ran the show for a while. Okay, so there's still um, Andrew Eddy. He's the founder of Joomla, um, or one of the founders of Joomla originally back in 2005. He's on the core team, um, and this is for the framework, not the CMS. There's Andrew Eddy, uh, Ian McLennan. Um, he's been on the team for a while. He's with eBay as well. Um, there's uh, David Hurley. He runs a um, web shop out of uh, North Carolina, I think. Anyways, he's been he's the Joomla community project manager, so he deals with developers and their complaints and things like that. Um, there's a guy, Michael Babker. He's uh, in the Army. He does IT for the Army, and he's on the Joomla team. And then there's another guy, Chad Widnagel. He's been with Joomla longer than anybody I know, even longer than... Andrew Eddy, he was with Joomla before it was Joomla. Oh. So we have a really good team of guys. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. Oh, and then there's uh, Ruben. <laughs> You'll be getting kicked off the team if you... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then there's uh, Ruben Wesling. He, or, uh, I don't know how to say his last name. He's German. Uh, looks like Webling, but... Just it's say it very angry. Ruben <laughs> Wesling. There you go. Uh, that's his name. And um, he's been with the team <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Um, We've yeah, just lost a lot of yeah. European followers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally pissed them off. Do your best German, Bill. Do you have a German accent? I, I, I think if I did that, it would be a hate crime being English. <laughs> so that's not acceptable. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so that's the core team now. There is there's six of us, seven of us, counting me. And then, then there's the Joomla CMS, which that is... There's so many different working groups within the CMS. We got the Bug Squad, the Security Strike Team. I'm on both of those. Those names, those names are awesome. Do they come with uniforms <laughs> with like a sash and a badge or anything? Uh, when, at the Joomla World Conference, you get a <laughs> the Joomla Security Strike Team or Joomla Bug Squad. Nice. Uh, that uh, that's the thing with one of the things with Joomla. It's uh, it doesn't have a corporate 
backing. Like WordPress has um, automatic. Yeah. Drupal has Acquia. Joomla has nothing. There's no corporate. Jo- company. Yeah, there's the Joomla Foundation, isn't there? Which is like a yeah. Normal... There's a open source matters. Um, oh yeah. And they they did open source matters because they wanted to really be able to represent legally more than just Joomla. But right now, if I remember correctly, that's all that they represent. Yeah. They, they hold so they, the trademark. They do all the legal and things like that, but they don't, you know, back the project like an automatic or Acquia does. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Um, when I was at uh, CMS Expo, which is where I met you, that was good fun. Yeah. Um, missed the most recent one, which is fortunate, but um, yeah, there was a lot of. Um, was it open source matters? It, it was. I saw a lot of these stickers that were uh, make make web not war, and I've got one yeah. on the back of my laptop now. Uh, yeah. Which was representing uh, Joomla and uh, and Drupal, I think. So I wasn't entirely sure if um, if they were. Uh, they seem to work fairly closely together. People, it's not as much like us versus them as as um, as some people might assume. Um, I thought they might be. I thought they were the same organization, but Open Source Matters is just the uh, just Joomla, is it? Or yeah, it holds it holds the legal um, the trademark for Joomla. It doesn't really have anything to do with Drupal, um, okay. although there is uh, some collaboration. We're trying, you know, trying to grow that. There was a recent article in the Joomla magazine um, stating that open source CMSs aren't competitors. You know, we're, right. we're working towards the same goal. Well, that's the funny thing because when I when I got to CMS Expo, everyone, a lot of people that use these different products, like you'll see on Reddit that they are really fucking tribal about the whole situation. It's like you're a WordPress developer, I will cut you. <laughs> you know, like they, well, that's a silly example because everyone hates WordPress developers. But um, if it's like, you know what I mean? Like you have Drupal and Joomla and, and Expression Engine, and they, they get really argumentative and like, mine's the best. Oh, mine's the best. Yeah. Um, and, and when I got there, like I was hanging out with the, uh, the Cloud CMS guys, are awesome. Um, hanging out with the ModX team, they've invited me to come hang out whenever I'm in Texas. You know, um, it was really funny actually with the ModX team. There was one guy, he was sat there, and he, didn't, he only said about two words, but he had his shirt like this. He had, his, he had his collar up, and uh, he, all he said was, hi. And I said, are you from Bath? And he went, yeah. And I was like, yeah, caught you. Only people from Bath wear their shirts up. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, uh, like, hanging out with all the teams, we all just went out drinking, and everyone's having a really good time. Um, and it's, it's not as, like, it's not, it's not a war. Like, we're all just trying to make good products. We've all taken different approaches. We, we don't necessarily agree with the approach that other systems have made. Which is why we end up making our own or using something different, right? Um, so it's awesome to see collaboration, and that's why I'm really happy about the fig being a thing. Um, as much as we might argue that the fact that like all of these projects have come together and we're actually <laughs> we we are working on making these standards. How efficiently we're doing that is a very different question. But um, the fact that we can all come together and actually do something which which helps all of us and hopefully uh, kind of some of the rest of the community at the same time. That's a pretty powerful thing. Um, how have you found being on the fig so far? Well, I joined um, about six months ago when Andrew Eddy stepped down to deal with some family matters. Um, he put me in his spot there to represent the Joomla project, and it was just a warm welcome overall. Um, I see there are some, and I'm sure they're good intentioned, and you know we're all computer scientists here, so... You know, everybody's completely objective, and nobody, you know, is doing anything <laughs> uh, based on their own personal opinion. But uh, it's it's hard to see past personalities um, sometimes. Even yeah. even going back and rereading some of the things I've posted, it's like, wow, am I really? Do I come across as that much of a prick uh, sometimes? Yeah, so. yeah I, I have reread posts of a year ago, and I was like, who's that cunt? Oh, me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but overall, I think it's good. We're the new the new bylaws. Um, everybody's violating the self throttling right now with cash. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Same with PSR four. It, it's really hard. I violate them a lot as well. But the, no, what the, are we what are we talking about here? Sorry, I was oh. just about to explain. Uh, self throttling isn't so much a bylaw. It's just like a um a, a common courtesy piece of advice. And there was one thread called self throttling, which I think Larry start, uh, Larry uh, Garfield started up. And the suggestion was basically, guys, post less. Uh, <laughs> he was pretty much saying, like, uh, try and post on one uh, thread item. Or, or, try and post in the same thread only once a day 
essentially, or as little as possible. Because what we started to see was there would be like two or three people that were just deadlocked, just bang, 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 bang. Obviously, you got the got the homepage. Uh, they have the, the the group open in a in a tab, and they're just refreshing that every now and then, and just like, oh, reply, and just wall of texting. I have definitely done this, um, and I think most people that are interested in the topic have been. Um, but the reason I find it hard sometimes to do it. Another piece of advice is if you and a couple of people are just having a conversation, then get on IRC, chat on there, and then post the results back, right? Uh, which, which I definitely do a lot. And whenever I can, I get someone to do that. Um, actually, with the number of PSR4 emails that have gone out, I that guarantee you I have twice as many in my inbox. So whilst it looks like I've been completely flagrantly ignoring these rules and then shouting at other people for doing so, making me a hypocrite, um, I, it, it could have been worse. <laughs> but uh, what's really hard is when you're really um, when you're involved in a conversation and and someone says something retarded, it's really hard to just go, oh well, that's just what they're gonna say. I'll wait until tomorrow to reply. <laughs> and in the meantime, everyone now has the wrong idea or thinks the world is flat because that person said that it is. So it's really it's hard, but it it does help, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's um. It's good. I know Jordy um, from Composer, he posted that on there when people were requesting his feedback for PS4. Yeah. He's like, yeah. hey, guys, just slow down. <laughs> you don't need to reply right now. Just Right. Stop. Yeah, he said, close your, ma- close your mail client for a couple of days and then post yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it. Uh, I pretty much did. I just ignored it for a couple of days. I did, I did post a ridiculous uh, YouTube video just being like, I don't... I, I watched I, uh, What are you guys talking about? Um, the hilarious thing, so with PSR4, uh, basically the story is uh, it was created a really long time ago, and then it was nearly done, and it was nearly voted in. Um, and I think someone pointed out there was a fatal error in the class exa- in the code example while it was in a vote, and I was like, oh, whatever, I'll just merge that because it's like a random trivial thing to the code, not the wording or the technical implementation, so whatever. Uh, I merged that, and everyone went, ah, oh, you changed, you you merged a change in the vote, ah, we throw it out, and people shouting the bed about that. So it didn't pass the vote that time. Um, and, that, um, uh, there was an issue that Anthony Thorero jumped in for some change. Was it that one, or was it another oh, one? He was, we were having conversations about whether you should be able to amend PSRs ever, and I was saying that... Um, I was saying that if something is... I can't remember what I was suggesting. I think it was... I can't remember the argument we had, but there was there was a conversation where I was saying there should be... Um, uh, you should be allowed to make trivial changes that don't affect anything that actually... Uh, that don't affect anything in the spec itself, right? Mm-hmm. So there was... I think I was going to merge a change to the, to the example um, code implementation, and mm-hmm. um, he was like, no, we can't do that. And I was like, well, why, you know? Um, but whatever, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that conversation that was being had. Okay. Um, so, what was the outcome on that, though? Are you allowed to merge changes? So, no, no. Um, we now have a rata, which is a workflow suggested by Larry Garfield, which I pushed through, um, and and we got a vote. So, what we can do is, uh, if we don't actually ever change the PS the spec itself, but if if it's agreed and voted upon that there is like a piece of confusion or a piece of wrongness or bad wording then we can post a note, uh, a note in a meta document that says, actually, this is what's happening. So in P- PSR2, um, if, you have a, if, you, if you're calling a method um, and you're passing it values um, and you pass it a, a, a callback or an array that spreads onto multiple lines, um, that should not technically break PSR2. It was definitely not meant to break the intention of PSR2. So there's some muddy wording which PHP code sniffer will say that's wrong. Whereas anyone that uses PSR2 actually goes, oh, actually no, this is fine. But if they if they then use the code sniffer implementation, then it says they're wrong. So that was something we decided was um, worth clarifying with Arata. So we just said no, this is fine. Shut up. And mm-hmm. then code sniffer implemented the change to allow it based on that Arata being a thing. But we didn't actually edit the the spec. Um, so that's how amendments kind of work. Um, okay. And for those of you that don't speak do. English, that was errata, because I couldn't understand what Phil was saying most of that. Errata? Okay, fine. Errata. <laughs> oh, I'm from England. Could I have a it sounded more, like please? Arnold Schwarzenegger you're saying router. Router. Errata. <laughs> uh, Don, was it with you? I think it was with you, where um, I was in Chicago, and I was trying to... Uh, I ended up saying... I was trying to say um, the root route, 
and I was just I kept saying root root, and everyone was like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, That's fine. But yes, so the the really brief history of PSR four is yes, there was originally a vote before the workflow happened uh, was a thing, and it it didn't pass then. My fault, I fucked up. Um, but then we, we everyone was kind of working on it, and 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 Paul spent a really long time making it into a much better document based on more feedback that came in after the vote because people like to wait until after votes. Um, and then we had this really good document. Well, what we thought was good, it was much better. Um, and then people kept coming up with alternative proposals. So uh, we were trying to get this autoloader standard passed, and then all of a sudden somebody says. Why are we just trying to auto load uh, PHP files? Why don't we load named uh, load resources as well, so we can do J uh, JavaScript files and CSS? I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool, but maybe not now. Maybe we do it as a separate thing. Um, so then the the idea of a second PSR I was referred to for resources was banding around, and then it was um, oh, well, these two have really similar ideas: the auto loading and the and the and the resource thing. So why don't we also why don't we take some of these rules out? and put them into PSR path mapping, and they have this third thing, and it was all crazy, and that took yeah. three months for us to argue through, and eventually we decided to ignore it all. Um, and, and then we finally got it in for another vote, um, and uh, people, I think people were just really tired of the whole conversation at that point, because uh, we didn't, I got it in for the vote um, through review, and uh, people were voting on it, sort of plus winning everywhere, but a lot of people were saying things like, yeah, I really hate the wording. I don't like the uh, the spec. Or other people were saying, I don't really understand the wording of what this means, but I know what the idea is, and then kind of things like that, which is fucking scary. Because if we're if I'm putting my name on the you know on this document saying like I I was one of the editors, I was involved with this spec. No one knows what it means, but <laughs> apart from the people that were like talking to the person that made it at the time, so they can use it. I'm like, that's not how specs work. You can't just do that. Uh, so we, I pulled it, much to uh, the annoyance of multiple people. Um, it's because and now, I was. I remember yeah. I texted you earlier that yeah. day or at Twitter. You said, "Hey, it's about to pass. We got three hours to pass." And then you, <laughs> yeah, I put out a tweet saying, um, "You're like, hey. uh, PSR four is going to pass in three hours unless something drastic happens." And then, like ten minutes later, I'm like, "Something <laughs> drastic happened," and posted to my link where I pulled it because I was I was basically at that point of like, "Woo!" And then I. Like I said, I just got off a plane. I just sat down in a pub and got my first cider and fish and chips. I'm a cliche. Fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> um, sat, sat down and did all that. Got on the Wi-Fi. Got everything up. Make that first tweet. Then kind of read through my emails and saw responses of a lot of people saying like, eh, "Don't like it," uh, and people seem to be unhappy with it. And the the analogy I used was, um, I felt like I'd just been kind of tossed. Like, I'm playing American football, not rugby, because I'm in America now. Um, I felt like I'd been tossed the ball, and I was running with it, and you know, pulled through me the ball, and I was running. I had it under my arm, and I'm running past the pitch, jumping over people left, right, and center, and ducking and diving, and got got it to the got it to the touchdown area, the yeah. end zone. Right, got to the end zone and smashed that down, and then the referee uh, walked over and just said, uh, "Nice run, mate, but that's that's not that's not a football. That's a bag of shit." Um, and I just really, <laughs> I just really felt like I'd, I'd kind of taken it and hadn't really looked at it too much. And just purely because nobody had come up with uh, anything that was bad about it, I was like, oh, it must be, it must be great then. Um, but it was only kind of towards the end where people started to raise concerns after the vote had started. Cheers, guys. That um, the people started to kind of bring their concerns forward. And then I was like, oh yeah, maybe this isn't right that we do this. So it's now caused a whole flurry of activity and. And there's been like ten different alternatives, and we're going around in circles. And we nearly got this document ready, and then again, somebody else said, "Why don't we just take PSR zero and change these two things?" <laughs> and we've got another alternative proposal made by the original document, uh, made by Paul Jones, and it's crazy. It's really fucking crazy, but we'll we'll get there one day. All maybe. right. So <laughs> this whole fig thing from something on the outside yeah. sounds like just a clusterfuck. And just like, are you just pouring in dozens of hours a week for no reason? Or I, I mean, it just sounds like a horribly political hours. process. I'm definitely pouring in hours worth of work a week, but I wouldn't say it's for no reason. Um, I'd say I put in more time than I ever expected to, and the outcome will be awesome. And if it's not, I'm gonna rage quit so hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm re- <laughs> I really like what the figure's doing. Getting there is difficult um, because people have opinions and they speak. Um, but that's like it almost seems to me at this point like you have too many members. Because no. the first, the first two, well, three went through fast. Mm. But now you have like they did, but there were members and it's there taking were massive problem style and really simple auto loading. It's not something at you know a cash PSR where somebody has Joomla had implementation already, full implementation. Um, yeah. You know, Symphony has theirs, Drupal has theirs. Everybody has cash. So yeah. it's trying to figure out the commonalities between that that's going to give us an interface that can be used by everybody with, you know, they also have to rewrite to be compatible with the interface. But there's a lot more opinions about this than there is code style. With code style, it's tabs or spaces. Oh, fuck you, it's tabs. No, it's spaces. All right. Yeah. And you what know. I will say about the original versions is that um, there, there were issues with the original three. Like, there's a lot. Um, and the, the the fact that I had to vote errata, you know, the, the fact that I had to make errata be a possibility, and then implement um, errata uh, specifically to cater for this one piece of really vague wording, there were there were lots of issues in there. Like, um, there's another piece of errata going in. Like, uh, if you try extending, um, if you try extending interfaces, so you have an interface that extends other interfaces, and you have loads of them, they go into multiple lines. There's just nothing in there for that. So no matter how you do it, it's invalid. Like there, there's loads of these crazy things that just weren't thought of in PSR2, um, and a lot of people have said it's because uh, most standards take like a year to make or something. And um, and whilst you can make them quicker because there's not that many people involved, that's not that's probably not a good idea. Um, so because these original ones did actually go through very quickly because there wasn't many people looking at the group, no one necessarily cared that much, um, and the people involved just went, yeah, cool, that fuck it, stamp done. Um, <laughs> I'm not I'm saying that's 100% how it went. There, w- there was voting procedures and everything else, but that sounds like something Paul Jones would say right there. <laughs> I'm sure he'll give me a slap when I finally get to meet him. But um, he, no, they the the fig moved faster previously, and and there is the potential, uh, there is the possibility that that some things should have had more time and effort put in. So at the moment, we kind of have the opposite problem of things are moving slow as shit. A lot of the reason for that, it's not because there's too many people. It's not a too many cook situation. Um, the the voting members, there's still only 27 of us, and there were, like a year ago there was 20 of us. It's not that different. Um, the A lot of the alternative proposals come from outside people. Um, one of the big things that's helped is getting the workflow in that I just explained about the draft and everything else, because... One of some things in review, theoretically, you're not meant to be able to make new alternative proposals because we're just getting this one document done. Um, and it also kind of, it makes it, it makes the whole thing a little bit more official when people know kind of where a document is. Whereas before with PSR, when it, uh, with PSR 4, when it was referred to as PSRX, um, we would like nearly get it done and then uh, there was no, we'd never know, is it ready for a vote yet? Like we'd never know because um, there was no, there was no way of knowing, and, and you just have to kind of feel like it probably was, and then as soon as you feel like it was about ready to put it in for a vote, uh, to, to finally get it accepted, some guy would just pop up on the mailing list one day and be like, oh, hey, I completely rewrote this and changed the whole thing and just started again. <laughs> and then people would say, oh, well, you can't just put it for a vote without without considering this alternative proposal, so then you have to argue about which one's better for ages, and then you have to work out all that shit, and then you kind of maybe merge some of their ideas, and they don't really fit in properly, so you have to kind of massage that down, and then three months later, you finally got over that bump, and then all of a sudden, oh, look, I've just come up with an alternative proposal. <laughs> Fuck off! Um, and, and you had that. That was the main problem. So that's why we kind of took a step back, made the workflow, then tried doing this. But it still kind of happened. Um, the I said to the guys, look, P- PSR 4, we're just going to roll this back out for a quick little, um, little touch-up. We're going to keep it in review, and we're going to see if we can improve some of the wording a little bit. And then all of a sudden, there's four alternative proposals. <laughs> Paul himself has now made three different versions of the doc. Um, I don't, it's hard, but I don't think it's too many people. <laughs> all right. Okay. So in short, my answer is no! <laughs> <laughs> TLDR. On that note, I'm going to go refill my beer. Nice. I'm now on uh, Woodchuck, the the, uh, the pumpkin Woodchuck. Um, woodchuck is generally terrible. It's entirely sugar. 
I think we had a little cider section on the episode on the on the podcast a few episodes ago. But uh, yeah, Americans like their sugary cider. I will accept it because it does. It's uh, it's better than nothing. Hmm. Uh, I guess you don't mind the sugar because you're on Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, I don't mind the sugar with uh, with Mike's. It's good. Um, tasty stuff. I got a lot of abuse last time I tried drinking some of that, but it's tasty. And now I'll get the abuse. Yeah, it it tastes good. My friends used to like me shit because I would order that, but that shit's good. Mm. Um, it is, and I'm probably get shit for this, but it's better than a Corona with lime. Well, the problem is now it's it's, it's out there for the entire internet to get new shit. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be posted on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Ops a uh, faggot in this video. Yeah, I don't think we can use that word. Uh, <laughs> but I was just about to say that's um, a meme at this point. It's not. A, oh, okay. Not okay. Derogatory. It's fine. Op is always a faggot. Uh, PHP drama. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> does anyone know who PHP drama is yet? Because everyone thinks it's me, and it's hilarious, and I, I love that people think it's me, but it's not. Um, I don't think it's you because it's not your your humor. Right. I think. I think I really think it's um, Jeremy McCullough. Okay. Whoever it is was at ZenCon. Right. So that really narrows it down. Like that's confirmed it was? He he tweeted from inside a session or something yeah. about a session. And so and why don't we just pick a random session, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. And he's definitely so, American. That's been proved by some of the terms he's used. So. Right. Yeah, like at first... That narrows it down. It's actually on my radar, but... Uh, Sorry. Not At first, Re- Lee Tingham was on my radar because it is his sort of. Yeah, game. yeah. Well, but then he started doing like your mom jokes, and so that. Right. I feel like it's definitely someone that like I've met, or at least that yeah. knows me relatively well, because like most of most of the first tweets were me, like about <laughs> <We're> <laughs> about probably, my shit, and like we're when probably I was, all going to be shocked, and it's going to be like Taylor Otwell. Yeah, it's going to be Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah dark horse. Uh, <laughs> Who's yeah, because there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of things I've said. Like I randomly post stuff in the fig, and then like a, an hour later, he'll he'll well, he or she uh, will have yeah, it up on. Uh, maybe it's Amy. <laughs> she blocked no. herself. She's arguing with herself. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Nah, the PHP drama has way too much of this sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello, me and Amy Stefan. Uh, Stefan, I've, I've heard it. Is pronounced Stevens, I thought. I, Steven, I thought it was Steven. Oh, I, I said that, and then it, um, I was with Anthony Ferrer, and he corrected me. I was like, okay, I'll pronounce it Stefan if I have to. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Bizarre. Anyway, we've been getting on recently, which is good. Um, she's, you know, been helping out in the fig. Uh, she was on the same side as me during the really bizarre conversation about how composer class map works. I don't even want to get into it. Like the whole thing about my video was in in PSR four we were saying um people were complaining about it saying that it was trying to define the one and only true algorithm that you had to use to 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 auto load your code. And I was like, how is that a possible thing? There were three rules in there that said um kind of when you get the class name, all you gotta do is um you map the prefix to the base uh, the base directory somehow. The autoloader does that. We don't care, but that will happen. Um, you take all of the backslashes, and you want to end up turning them into forward slashes, um, and you want to put .php on the end. So that wasn't meant to be describing sequential pseudocode. That was just saying that's what's going to end up happening, right? It's meant to be kind of describing the, the required effect and not saying... And not like literally saying you have to SDR replace this, and this is the only way to do it. <laughs> um, which <laughs> so many people seem to think. Um, and usually, me and Amy disagree about absolutely fucking everything. Um, but she was right there helping out and, and giving examples. So I, I asked um, one of the main people that was concerned, confused about this, or suggesting that the algorithm was being defined. I said, "Can you give me an example of a different type of algorithm that you would like to use?" And he said, well, class mapping. You know, I want to I wanna cache the results um, in an array and then, and then use them later. I was like, that's absolutely fine. You can do that. And he went, no, you can't. I said, yes, you can. And then that was the conversation for three days. I was just like, 
he was just arguing about how words worked in English, and I'm like, but I speak English. And <laughs> it was really weird because um, that conversation went on for a while, and in the end, Amy stepped in to try and give a decent example, and she said that PSR zero um, described the same kind of effect. It was like this will turn into this, um, but uh, but composer um, uh, PSR zero would allow you to use class maps because composer is PSR zero compatible and it also supports class map, therefore, if you can class map your PSR zero results, it's still a PSR zero autoloader. And in the same token, PSR four, you can cache the results and it would still be a valid PSR four autoloader. From that, they they misinterpreted that as the built in default class mapping tool in Composer uh, will somehow manage to <laughs> auto load your PSR zero code. Like, no, that's not what we. Uh, yeah, it's just a big clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's so close to being kind of what we said, but really not. It's like it, it does. Yes, the generic class map functionality will auto load PSR zero code if you've told Composer that it's PSR zero code and you've said um, optimize the auto loader. So then the PSR zero logic will follow the exact same rules as, as the normal autoloader, but it will take all those classes and shove them into the same class map array. Therefore, PSR0 can use class mapping to map the results. But they completely ignored the fact that class map is a generic term for this is a map of classes, um, <laughs> and then decided that the only type of class map that ever exists was the default class map, which is where you say, there's a directory. Why don't you go and see what classes are in it? And they were like, but if you look through this thing, that's not that's not PSR zero. We're like, yeah, dude, we we know, but and and that was that was the argument. And then I think we need a PSR class map. Sorry, we need a PSR class map. <laughs> yeah, 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 that might work. Settle all the questions, and be to say what is <laughs> something different. You know, Phil, so two years from now, we'll have auto loading and class mapping down. Yeah, that would be two yeah. years ago. <laughs> two years from now, I'll be dead if I. <laughs> So, Phil, I tweeted out before uh, we started this that you really, with the autoloader, you don't even need to transform backslashes into forward slashes. You can just take right. the base and slap PHP on the end and try to load it from the base directory because, yep. as PHP was pointed out before, you, yeah. PHP will handle either one of those. So, Does that work yeah. across OS? Does that work like Windows, Linux, Mac? Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. PHP does that for you now. The, okay. One of the things that was brought up was that apparently PSR 4 as it stands and PSR 0 as it does uh, doesn't support remote file systems. This was apparently a, a, a concern. Um, so the whole point of trying to term, of using the terms was uh, that rule was essentially saying you should take the backslash, which is the namespace separator, and turn it into whatever is the correct uh, whatever is the, the directory separator for your file system of choice, right? For the target file system is what I referred to it as. Uh, because if you're using OS, uh, like, I don't know, OS 9 or something, then, like, maybe it's a, a, a carrot or something. Like, I don't know what there other directory separators there are. I don't know how we're not supporting remote file systems. But essentially, we're just saying, take that and turn it into whatever the fuck you use to separate your namespaces. Maybe maybe your namespace uh, maybe your folder is separated with the word Dave. I don't know, but like as long as it as long as it's done that way, then it's fine. Um, there's been some interesting discussions in there. But. And that was uh, actually one of the original um, suggestions for or complaints of PSR zero was somebody said uh, a guy named Tom, can't remember his last name, but he's saying you should be able to just specify what you want to split on and all this stuff. It was very confusing, but... Yeah. It's all taken oh. care of. Hopefully. <laughs> How long before PSR4 is back to vote, would you say? Well, a new alternative proposal came up yesterday, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's, what's ended up happening was the one that went to vote, the one that nearly passed the vote before I fucked with it, um, that one ended up becoming very much... Uh, ev I made a lot of iterative improvements. Me, Paul, um, uh, Paul Dragunis, and uh, Mike Van Veel sat down, and we kind of went through a lot of stuff. We we felt like we 
simplified the wording and we took care of most people's complaints without bastardizing the entire thing and then more stuff happened and then more alternative proposals came up and then more merges happened and it, I don't feel like it got away from us um, but it definitely, it got wordy. It just got long and like the definition section is really fucking long and it's, it was definitely verbose but that's because it's trying to take care of everyone's concern um, so it got into a really big document and then somebody else came up with here's PSR 0 plus 2 rules which is all we're adding. It's Removing the fa um, removing the special meaning from underscores, so they're literal, uh, and and making this whole like prefix match up with the base directory. They're the only two changes. Um, so someone came up with PSR zero plus those two, um, and then Paul came up with um, a kind of a mix between PSR zero plus the two things and kind of his, the intentions of his old document, but much smaller. So now we have those three to pick from. And so if, probably... you, if you pick that one, you know, Drac and and Bo and they all they like that one they would accept that so yes. if you like that well, one I think we can start a vote on that I'm I'm pretty sure that the mini one's going to happen and it's going to happen relatively soon the weirdest thing is most of the people that have been complaining that PSR four doesn't cover all their concerns doesn't say this that or the other they're the people saying yeah I like this mini version which doesn't mention any of the things we've been arguing about <laughs> <laughs> okay okay sure yeah, if, just... if you're happy if you're if you're happy then fine we'll do it I don't I don't care. <laughs> um, it's getting really close though I think within a month like definitely within a month we'll have something going back in for a vote so it should be implemented fairly soon and the best part is the technical implementation and the, the, it has not changed um, nothing technically has changed about it it's just the way we're trying to word it um, and that's a bit bizarre but at least <laughs> at least it's not like cash which is like you know the, the method names change and the, the whole where methods yeah, are, they are what's storing all that stuff it's, uh, it's confusing I hope we get cash through soon mm. but I don't see that happening yeah Ben when are you going to join up it's so much fun it, it does not sound fun <laughs> well, so yeah. back with away from actually the... yeah, go ahead go ahead Don Oh, okay, I was going to say, this is away from fig stuff, so if you want to say something about fig. Oh, yeah. What, is, what are the rules? Because, like, most people represent a major project, but then there's some people who don't seem to represent anything. I'll leave that one to you, Dom. Okay, so um, before I joined, there was some um, you know, rules put in place for that. Mostly, the fig is the framework interoperability group. So the, the idea is for projects, but there's been a vocal minority that are saying, hey, let's not admit projects. Let's admit people who can make a difference and and uh, really contribute. So um, there's so like framework core devs. Yeah, like framework core devs or community members that have influence and can really get the ear of the community and kind of see what the community wants. So mm -hmm. Cal Evans currently fills that role of representing the community at large. Good and chance. then there's... Um, with the 27 members, there's some CMSs. I should have got the stats on how many CMS versus how many framework only versus how many package only. Um, you know, Jordy's on there from Composer and Packagist. So um, it's about, I'm of the, the idea, if a project's big enough, it needs to be represented. Um, it was like that with um, Yi. Yi just joined a few weeks ago because Phil reached out to them on Reddit and got him, got him this membership request. Well, he wasn't very active on the FIG mailing list at all, you know, before then. But the project's big enough. We wanted the project represented. Um, now there's another one, um, Sculpin, um, which is Sculpin.io. For those who are wondering, it's like Jekyll, but written in PHP. It's a static site generator. Okay. It doesn't have a very big community. Um, it has a few users, and... Um, it's growing, but it is written by one of the most active people on the PHP fig mailing list. So, in my opinion, the project itself, in its own, shouldn't be able to join, but the person behind the project has enough to offer that he should be able to join. So, um, we just put that out there for discussion today. We'll see what happens with that. But Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a hard one, because... I definitely understand only wanting framework core, but then you have people like Cal and people like Jordy who definitely should have the voice. So that's, yeah. kind of, that's a hard question. Yeah. 
I guess people are stuck on the name framework interoperability group, so some of them are saying, hey, it's just frameworks. But yeah. With the monolithic frameworks kind of going the way of the dinosaur, you know, and it's it's all about packages now and, and, and things like that, it really needs to be, I think, people-based and not yeah. project-based. But again, if it's well, a that's pretty project, subjective. So what do we what do we miss there? You're saying it should be people based and not project based uh, so for the thing, members. Or? Um, I gave my opinion on who should be able to join, um, or what the thing should consist of. One, if it's a big enough project like Yi, um, it should be able to join because it's got a huge community behind it. Alternatively, if a person is active, knows what he's talking about, and is able to contribute time and resources. Uh, in the case of Bo Simonson, he should be able to join. And he has a project, Sculpin.io, that was just put on the mailing list today to discuss the possibility of a membership application. Yeah, yeah, I From, saw that. I mean, if um, the way I fit it, figure is, is, it's kind of how PHP internals does it. If you uh, you can get voting uh, voting privileges for things like you know RFCs, uh, you can get voting privileges if you've uh, submitted a patch in the past. Um, if you know, so if you've given them code, um, or if you've been active on the forum, uh, active on the mailing list, or if you've uh, if you're representing a large project. So I can probably get voting privileges just based on piracy MS alone, which would be nice. Um, but if I hadn't, and I'd been obviously proving that I've been really, if I've been contributing to conversations a lot and people like my contributions, then I could also be voted in, right? Um, so that it might make sense. Part of me, um, but. The way I figure it is, if you are a, if, <clears throat> I don't know what's wrong with me right now. Um, if you're a, a PHP developer and you know what you're talking about and you've got a lot of useful opinions for the fig, you've probably made something. You know, you've probably got some project out there that you could that you could use to represent you. Um, and if you've been making enough useful contributions, then people will just say, sure, yeah, we'll vote him in. At least he's got a project that he's representing. Um, it doesn't need to be easy for you to get in if. Because the way I, the way I kind of do it is, if I know who they are and they have been making useful contributions, I will vote for them. Or if I have no idea who the fuck they are, but they represent a massive project, then I will also vote for them. So that's why I got the guys from Facebook SDK, and I I, I sponsored the guy from Yee. I have no idea who he is. I've never you know had any conversations with him or anything else. We just work in different communities, whatever. Um, but he represents Yee, and having Yee on the fig is powerful. So I was just like, yeah, dude, come on in. You know, that'd be great. Yeah, um, that's pretty so. much what I said too. Is it's all, all that same thought. If the if it, the project's big enough, it should be represented, or the person's making enough contributions. Yeah, yeah. it was value. So, so I definitely think uh, you know we can get that in. Yeah, um, that reminds me of a thing. I was chatting to the people that the Pass team, Pass dot com. If you ever come across them, uh, they have been acquired by Facebook, and they have been put in charge. Of uh, the Facebook SDK, yay! Someone's That's, working uh, on the SDK. You didn't understand. <laughs> parse, parse.com. Yeah, yeah. So those guys, they. Oh, did. okay. I had no idea what Phil said. Oh yeah, farmer, farmer, cider cheese. That's how I talk. Um, <laughs> the uh, the past team have been put in charge of uh, of the PHP SDK for Facebook. Um, and they are very interested in making it PSR 0, PSR 1 and 2, um, and all these various things. And I was kind of chatting to them about how they could maybe kind of use uh, major version milestones to move bits at a time. So, you know, PSR 0 first off would be quite easy to do with uh, with maybe, or, or just fuck it, start again, rewrite. I'm not sure which. Probably rewrite might make more sense. But um, they're interested in doing that. They're, they're looking like they're going to get into the fig. Um, they, they're doing a pretty good job. Um, they might even merge my pull request, which makes the PHP, uh, PHP SDK work on uh, on 5.5. So that'd be nice. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd like that to go in sometime. It's only been two months, so you know, it's it's no rush. You don't sound bitter at all, at least. No, <laughs> no, it's it's the, it's really fucking annoying because every single time I deploy any code, um, when you deploy code uh, using uh, using like Chef and it runs Composer to to install all the files. Um, I have it loading from. Uh, you can use preferred distribution, which means that it um, it will install uh, install zip files if it can find them. And um, so Compose is always the slowest part of any Chef deployment. 
um, and it and it now it's much quicker. So it goes dunk 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 dunk, and it just uses the cache of um, uh, the cache of zip files from the previous deploy. Mm. When you do it, uh, when you have a fork on there, because I've had to fork the Facebook SDK um, just so I can get that one line of code in there. Um, it, it won't use a zip file anymore because it's just a random commit. So it's uh, it instead of going dunk 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 dunk, it goes thinking about it, cloning the Git, getting the whole repo down, and it takes really fucking long. And every day I see that happen, and every single day I just go, just merge it, just merge it and tag a new version already, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I am I am bitter about it because it reminds me every day that they haven't done it yet, and it's really frustrating. <laughs> That's fine. Nice. Uh, do we? I, I think we've covered stuff. Do you have anything, Don? You want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say here in a couple weeks. I was talking about. I mentioned earlier the Joomla World Conference, um, which is the eighth, uh, ninth, and tenth of November. We're having because um, we were talking about CMSs competing with one another earlier, and um, we actually we're having Matt Mullenweg of WordPress fame. Um, he's coming and actually doing a keynote at the Joomla World Conference on Whoa. Sunday. So, Make sure no one has any glass bottles. Yeah, yeah, nobody would throw those. Um, so you know, that's just the community and the PHP community as a whole kind of growing more, um, and I'm really looking forward to that. Nice. Yeah, it's cool. powerful stuff. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think again, it's things like Composer and PSL Zero and the Fig and all that junk, kind of bringing people closer together because you don't have to write all your own code from scratch, and you can easily include somebody else's stuff and. And I, I even saw conversations a little while ago between, um, uh, crap, who was it? Um, I have no idea how to say his name, Pad, Padrick, Pad, Padrick Brady? Yeah, I think it's Padrick Brady. I'm just having a really hard time pronouncing it, but that I didn't really think. Uh, yeah, him and um, one of the, uh, whatever, like Zend and Symphony were discussing maybe one of them should uh, kind of deprecate their YAML package and then the other one should use the others. Right, so that'd be fucking awesome. Like you download Zend, and then like there's a Symphony package in there. It's just people, nice. the, all the communities are coming much closer together because we have this whole package dependency ability now that we never had before. So it's good to see the CMS developers doing that as well instead of just being tribal. Right. So there's actually um, there's a pull request on the Joomla framework right now to use the um, Symphony session package. Yeah. The only thing that's holding us back from that is that it's tied to HTTP Foundation, and we don't necessarily oh, use that. Oh, that's big. Yeah, if it was its own um, component, we would. I'm pretty sure we would. It would be merged already. But we're still talking. Do we want to use HTTP Foundation or uh, or not? The mouthful. And then also, <laughs> on top of that, um, Joomla does utilize uh, Symphony's YAML package for our uh, registry. Nice. So, yeah, we are starting to uh, bring in some of these other uh, packages. We got uh, uh, the whoops error handler in there. Nice. That, that's going in Joomla Framework. What's that? And that's going in the Joomla Framework. Yeah, that's going in Joomla that's Framework. That's awesome. Um, I remember when that was po posted first on Reddit, and I um, I sent the link to, to Taylor to include it. And um, I'm pretty sure he was, wasn't too impressed with it being called Damn It. Um, and, I, <laughs> would oh, yeah. you, and then luckily they changed the name because enough people said, like, hey, maybe we should change the name. But uh, would you have included it if it's called Dammit? Um, I wouldn't mind. I'd, sure. <laughs> but uh, maybe some of the other guys would. Mm. Um, we were, were talking about using PHP UTF-8. I love it. I want to use it. But yeah. um, actually, we had to open an issue with them because they do some they do some startup things during the startup of the package that we didn't necessarily want to push. Oh, on. yeah. Are you talking about patchwork UTF-8? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's got some weird bootstrap stuff in there. I'd like to see a, a more kind of PSR1 rules following don't fuck with the global state logic. Exactly. So we, we haven't used that yet, but there's been talk of that. Um, so uh, before we end here, I did want to say a couple things about the Joomla framework and one of the reasons why we didn't, another reason why we didn't take somebody else's framework and just build on top of that is we had a core group Joomla works with the Google Summer of Code every year for the past nice. however long, and we get a lot of contributions from that. And um, over the past two years, there have been contributions for uh, open source APIs. We have a Facebook API. We have the first full implementation of the GitHub V3 API. Um, mm -hmm. There are some others out there now, but we were the first one to be 
fully compatible with uh, V3. Uh, we, of course, we got Twitter. We got OpenStreetMaps. Um, that's that was submitted to the CMS when we're porting it into the framework here still. So that's what not... do you mean, sorry, when you say that you have these APIs and you have compatibility? What are you? What... Okay, so if you go to GitHub.com slash Joomla forward slash Joomla framework and then yeah. look in the source Joomla folder, you'll see there's these different social packages that we have that offer a similar API between all the packages oh, that interfaces okay. with all of these social, um, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Like right, I said, so is it, are they essentially uh, PHP APIs that you can, uh, PHP packages that you can use to kind of interact with their APIs that offers yeah. a very exactly. consistent uh, method naming type of approach of Okay. Yeah, the setup is the same. Um, you are, know, they, are they tied to Joomla? What's that? Are they tied at all to Joomla framework, or are they completely standalone and happen to be under your namespace? Or? So right now, that was one of the things that's a 1.0 blocker for us, is um, being that they they came from the CMS, and we've, we've namespaced them, put them into, and started following best practices in the framework, and we're still trying to figure this out, how we can address it. But right now, there are some dependencies that you have to use. Like, you have to use our application. You busted. I know. That's what I said. I'm like, we, this is one of our strongest points for the framework. Yeah, well, that, that needs to happen. It, to make it that you have to use our application package with this is just bullshit, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a 1.0 release yet, so we can... Break compatibility, you know, all day. So yeah, yeah. Um, well, I that want sounds like a very really powerful thing to try and do. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's the one point blocker. I have a couple weeks before Joomla World Conference and the scheduled release um, to try to figure that out. But I've been busting my ass these past couple weeks just uh, getting everything ready. Had nice. over 50 commits, um, and you know, probably a dozen and a half merged pull requests into the framework. Um, just cleaning everything up and getting it ready. So, ah, well, you should have cool. another couple of Mike's Hard Lemonades and try and get on planning how you're going to do that. <laughs> you <gotta laughs> meanwhile, the meanwhile I've right? realized that I'm uh, about half an hour late to meet my girlfriend, and I've already had to cancel dinner on her because I spent the entire evening fixing chef bullshit instead <laughs> of having dinner with my girlfriend. So um, on that note, I will bid you all farewell. Um, this worked out pretty well. We'll probably get this video up, or definitely at least the audio up, um, and yeah. you guys can, if you didn't see it live, you can watch it. Next time, follow uh, PHP Town Hall um, on Twitter, so you can see when we're uh, about to do more, and um, we might even try and get a calendar up or something crazily organized like that. Whoa, Whoa hang on. Oh. We, can, we can do a shared public... We, we got videos. Have, hey now. now. All right. All right. One, I'm, just one. I'm just saying maybe. I'm just saying maybe we'll get a calendar up. Do you want to make like a project plan and schedule guests like a year out now? Yes, I do feel like we might need to get some uh, some venture capital for this. So I will start hitting up uh, investors. We'll probably need at least three million. Um, but uh, I think we're worth I was, I mean, if, I was if thinking three billion. Million. Yeah. Billions, <laughs> three million. Billion. <laughs> million. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, so on that note, uh, piss off, guys. All right, see you, Phil. <laughs> see you. Uh, yeah, awesome. I like the way that I ended that with that piss was, off. That's, yeah, that's that was the best outro. So far. Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> so very broadcasting. Should I end the broadcast? Yeah. Seems All right. Possible.